Hello. Um, <clears throat> I'm Yanni Lukisas. Uh, I'm up here, here with, I'm um, faculty in digital media in the School of Literature, Media, and Communication. And I'm up here with um, my colleagues Emily Weigel, faculty in biology, and Michael Zoe, um, undergrad, soon to be master, student in computer science. And we are gonna, we're gonna attempt to demo a uh, augmented reality application we've been working on, um, meant, meant for use in the eco commons. But you'll have to imagine you're, you're in the eco commons. Um, I'm, I'm Michael's gonna come down and, and show it to you on this, on this iPad and walk around so you can be kind of looking out for him. Um, to do that. So this is part of a larger um, set of projects that uh, are sponsored by a new um, Center for Interdisciplinary Media Arts that uh, is a collaboration between the Ivan Allen College and the library and we're very interested in fostering new kinds of collaborations between artists and designers on one hand and scientists and engineers on the other to really show the um, creative opportunity outside of kind of traditional disciplinary boundaries. So um, I got to, to meet uh, Dr. Weigel a couple of years ago now. Um, actually, Jenny Hirsch <laughs> suggested I reach out um, to Dr. Weigel because uh, for a long time I'd been working on experimental forms of data visualization. Uh, I'm, I'm somebody, I'm, I'm trained originally as an architect and I'm very interested in how we can kind of bring data back into place, back into um, our experience of the world, rather than something kind of set apart as kind of almost aspatial or, or, or space agnostic. And um, I was interested in doing some work with data in the eco-commons, and you know, I met Dr. Weigel, and um, um, we, we launched this project a couple of years ago, also actually with another undergrad, um, Shruti Vedula, um, around bird data. Um, and this is interesting because I've spent a lot of time thinking about how do we know what is the right context for understanding a data set? And here we try to invert it so that data become a context, a kind of lens for experiencing the eco-commons. And I think this is a really exciting idea that we're just starting to scratch the surface of where um, data might, instead of kind of distracting us or turning away our attention from, from the natural world, help us learn to look better um, and become better stewards of, of the environment. And, um, Dr. Weigel is going to talk a little bit about why um, birds are a kind of charismatic um, subject or case study for, for, for doing this. Hey, y'all. All right, how many of you in here have ever seen a bird? Hands up. Okay, good. So we all know what we're kind of talking about. Well, probably the bird that you have seen, you have seen because they're bright. Typically, you'll see the brighter birds because those bright birds stand out. Anyone have a guess as to why they stand out? Why it might be good to stand out? Mating, yeah. So typically, you're, you're going to see one of the birds standing out to mate, um, being bright in their environment, but there's a cost to, to being bright. What's the cost of being bright? Predation. So you're kind of balancing sex and death, right? So there's kind of a balance there. And when you're balancing that out, different colors do different things in different environments. And as we know, as the seasons change, the color background that birds are against also changes. And so there are certain seasons for mating. There are certain also colors that we might wear at certain times of the year. Same thing goes for the plumage that the birds have. Their feathers sort of change color across their lifetime and across the season to basically mimic their environment. There's, there's a survival and mating kind of incentive to getting that quote unquote right. Really it is that evolution forces it to be so, okay? So when we're thinking about that and we're thinking about the colors of these organisms, it's important for us to think about that as climate change continues, the pace at which organisms respond to climate change is also going to differ. So that means some of them are gonna be able to respond quickly and so their colors might change. You might see cherry blossoms bloom a little bit sooner. You might see some colors wait a little bit longer to start uh, appearing on trees and that kind of thing. And that changes the color environment. And so thinking about how the color environment changes, what we might then notice in contrast is really sometimes um, an interesting first look at thinking about how climate change might change the colors that we see and what we're able to um, observe in the, in the natural space. So I'm going to hand it back over to Yanni because he's the color expert. I'm more the bird person, so I'll pass it back. 
Thanks so much. I think, you know, uh, I love these kinds of collaborations because I get to learn the whole, the whole way. I think, you know, doing data visualization for me and I think for, for you know, for, for many others and I see for many of my students is a way to learn about a new domain, um, a way to understand kind of what matters, how to interpret evidence from a, from a new domain. Um, and, um, I, you know, I think one of the things I've learned is just how important color is and particularly, you know, when colors change in the environment, that's, that, that might appear to us as like, you know, we, we might barely notice it or if we do, we think, oh, that's a shame, but, um, you know, it's life and death for, for, for a lot of animals. And, you know, hopefully you got a chance to see the app. It really, it just kind of, um, uses uh, eBird data um, in order to um, um, create these, uh, to create this kind of spectrum of, uh, of colors, which are like, we think of as like the color worlds of these birds, these particular birds, and every bird has like a different color world that it likes to inhabit. And then as you explore using this application, you can look at how the colors in the environment you're, you're engaged in, um, kind of correspond to the, the color world of that bird. And you can also capture new images and, and extract their colors. And, and we've run some workshops to really see like, how does this affect the way um, students think about color and, and notice it? Um, and so we're, we're really excited about this. Um, yeah, we hope to speak to some of you. We hope you get a chance to test it out. It is a web app, so it's online. And if anyone's interested in kind of trying it out, um, and if you're interested in more broadly in thinking about how, how the arts and how design can kind of enhance and extend um, the work that scientists do um, to really either become a kind of new, new space or research or to just reach a broader audience and kind of bring, bring people in to thinking about these issues. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we, we went down to Savannah and uh, we did a, a, a workshop at the Contemporary Art Museum there with kids as young as, I think, five. So, <laughs> um, yeah, there's lots of space for, I think, these kinds of collaborations to be productive and to expand the reach of, of Georgia Tech research. So thanks very much.